Hello, welcome to Makers Bar. I'm Akshita. I'm Deepthi. Yeah, so, good morning. This is Sandeep. Good morning, Sandeep. Hi, Sandeep. Okay. So many years ago, I worked on an acquisition of GE supply chain finance business. And during that time, I learned quite a bit about uh, trade finance. So I've been personally following this entrepreneur for a year. And he's a founder of M1 Exchange. M1 Exchange is an online exchange for discounting of trade receivable, receivables based on uh, based out of India. The exchange has enabled so far three uh, in so far discounting of invoices worth 3.5 billion USD just in the last four years. Uh, welcome, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you, Akshita, and thank you, Deepti. Welcome, Sandeep. A little bit about um, M1 Exchange and the small business market in India. So the MSME market, which is micro, small and medium sized businesses, market is over 500 billion uh, and there's a credit gap of 200 billion. The pandemic impacted 95% of the businesses, but the MSMEs were most brutally impacted. So according to a recent survey, over 82% of the small businesses in India have been affected by the pandemic and access to credit has been voted as the top aid needed by MSMEs with over 60% of them requesting access to a credit line. So in such a situation, M1 Exchange is a lifesaver for the small business sector in India. So uh, we are very, very delighted, Sandeep, to have you uh, talk, us, uh, talk to us about how you built M1 Exchange and uh, know about your journey. So welcome so much to make us part. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me and uh, my pleasure to interact with both of you. Uh, and must compliment uh, the way both of you built the Makers Bar and given an opportunity to the entrepreneurs to come and share their experience. Uh, so we started our journey in 2016 when we when the idea was nurtured and uh, uh, I was running a shared services uh, for backend processes, which we call as shared services for accounts payable and account receivable for many corporates in India. And that was my first venture. And uh, therein I was seeing the challenges of the payment flow. And when I read this white paper released by RBI that how these challenges can be sorted for India in terms of bill discounting, factoring. Uh, and that's when I realized, my God, this can be a solution. And because this was digital, so uh, one could see the impact it can make. Um, having said that in those days, uh digital fintech words were not so common in india and uh, one could not get attracted to them uh, just because there was a you know market attraction towards it uh, we could only get in because we saw that there's a merit in it there is uh, we can solve a challenge and and it should be widely accepted because of that we got into it uh, having said that to be honest i didn't know the elephant is going to be so huge uh, I will have to deal, uh, I mean, uh, on, on M1 exchange, uh, it's the banks who come and discount the invoices. M1 exchange doesn't have its own investment or an equity to discount the invoices. So we had to therefore do everything that a bank needs on a platform, whether it is compliance, whether it is uh, credit, uh, whether it is flow of transaction. Uh, and that's when the challenge started. And uh, like I said, we didn't know the elephant is so huge because each bank in itself is a mammoth uh, organization and we yeah. had to work with each bank to build it. Yeah. Uh, and that's when the journey started and that's when the challenge started. Yeah. Uh, when I got into it uh, in the initial days, in two, I mean, 2016 went into iterations and building up the platform and 17 when we launched it, uh, the feedback we used to get is factoring is not worked in India. This is a this program is not going to work. Uh, digital invoice. Who will who will look at the digital invoice and do the factoring? Uh, I mean, no, none of the none of the banks was coming forward to put the limit on the platform and take a risk on the platform. Hmm. Few private banks did come forward. And uh, initial year, we could uh, we could barely do uh, in Indian rupees 300 crore uh, worth of discounting in the full 12 months, uh, which was uh, which was very very uh, you know just a token amount uh, mm -hmm. in those days. And we were taken as a very small enterprise, and the banks did not we did not used to get the f full attention from a bank 
because the value wise it was a it was a very very minuscule number something what they do in a in a probably half a day uh, we were doing in a year wow having said that uh, the conviction the process was improved by the banks only i mean mm. they only came forward they only contributed towards building it more robust how to make it more attractive how to the business model was fine tuned by them only mm -hmm. and fortunately today we have 44 banks mm. bidding wow. and financing uh, we are doing 100 crores a day mm. uh, now <laughs> And, well, uh, <laughs> and uh, we appear in the in in the business plan of many large banks in India, yeah. because in their business plan they want to scale up. They want a specific pie of the kitty. So now we are appearing in the business plan of most of the banks. So yes, uh, God, I mean, with the blessings of the God and and support from the banks itself, <laughs> uh, the concept has picked up in India. So. Tell us one thing, like how did you go from like getting the, you know, getting big banks onboarded is a huge task. Like, like you said, you, you, you were minuscule in the very beginning. How did you kind of gain trust? Because this, this is a lot about trust business as well. So how did you go about doing that? Yeah. Uh, so Akshata, uh, uh, we had to work on various fronts to gain the trust. Yeah. And uh, the regulator played a very, very important role for us uh, as a partner role. Uh, they gave a confidence to the banks that all our technologies have been audited, all our processes have been audited. Uh, in India, no one had ever uh, done a process wherein digitally a, a buyer, a seller and a financier are signing, are signing an agreement with the platform and not signing a bilateral agreement among themselves. Yeah. Right. So, so really speaking, uh, the bank had not seen the relationship with the buyer oblique seller. They have not seen the face of a buyer and a seller. And uh, for them, it was a change that the relationship is uh, from a relationship banking. They're coming to a transaction banking, which is just watching on the screen, uh, validating it and then uh, uh, putting a putting a credit on the transaction. So uh, we had to actually in the first year, as I said, few private banks came forward. The cycle was completed. The invoice was for 60 days credit, 90 days credit. The payment came back uh, very well on time. Uh, the banks could see that, uh, you know, this this process has worked. Now, what, one of the important points was the digital signature, which made a magic. Now, the mm -hmm. banks used to say that in a physical copy, I have a hard copy signed. I have the agreement signed. I have a deed of assignment of receivable. Mm -hmm. signed in the favor of me so therefore in the court of law tomorrow i have to claim the credit or claim the money uh, yeah. i have a legal document so yeah. on the digital document you are just saying i agree and yeah. uh, you know how would how would he can deny tomorrow that his password has been compromised so therefore yeah. we applied digital signature in our process mm -hmm. which is very well uh, recognizable in the court of law in the indian court of law and now internationally of course uh, which did the magic because that gave them the confidence that this document is equivalent to a physical signed copy that they get when they are doing a bilateral program physically. So that's one one such point. Yeah. Uh, the second such point has been uh, the fact that the default on the platform mm -hmm. over last f four years and even Corona period during the corona period the default has been zero negligible mm -hmm. not even negligible it's zero mm -hmm. and overall in four years the default has been 0.3 percent versus 12 percent which they are doing on a bilateral sme lending okay. so that is again a proof of the concept that this digitally this is working well and this is beneficial for them mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and that trust get kept getting built over a period of few years. And uh, today, finally, uh, that issue does not come on the in the discussions. The issue now the discussions are more about how to scale it, how to what are the next level, what are the mm -hmm. next ones. 
that's awesome so uh, taking a step back sandeep uh, maybe for some of our audience that are not very uh, familiar with what threads is uh, could you just walk us through the flow like how do you sure uh, so if it's a supplier a small and medium enterprise uh, they have uh, to supply goods or services to a, to a, to their customer who could be a medium corporate or a large corporate uh, we onboard uh, both the corporate as well as the supplier on the platform uh, they when they when we onboard them uh, it's a digital uh, agreement that they are signing they are getting onboarded within few minutes and in the digital agreement it's enabling them to do many to many relationships now that's an important part it's not a bilateral relationship it's a many to many relationship why am i saying that is because we do their kyc mm-hmm. and they, that kyc is open to 44 banks so oh. they don't have to do they don't have to do any kyc okay. with 44 banks or with 44 agreements they don't have to sign with with 44 banks now once they are onboarded uh, we run a roadshow with the banks that this buyer a buyer is a normal medium company or a large company with its suppliers will be doing the supply chain finance transactions on the platform and during the roadshow the, the banks take a credit risk on the buyer and set up the credit limit on our platform mm-hmm. So let's say 44 banks, 10 banks have taken a credit limit and X, Y, Z is the amount. And that is uh, that is on our platform. Now, once that is done, the program is ready to go live. And then the uh, suppliers and the buyers do their transaction on the platform in the sense that the suppliers submit their invoice digitally. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could do it by mobile phone, by their uh, web portal and the buyer approves the invoice in terms of its genuinity Mm -hmm. that there is no dispute in the invoice Uh, to that extent they approve the invoice Mm -hmm. and once it is approved the the banks who have taken a credit risk who have set up a limit they can see that the buyer and seller have approved the transaction Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the basis that they start placing bid to discount that invoice. So the mm-hmm. bid could be for, for let's say 4%, 5%, 2% per annum. Mm-hmm. And based on that bid, the supplier or the buyer can select the best bid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all this happens within a span of 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour, uh, at times at the most two hours all this com- gets completed and how did it happen prior to uh, this like this online uh, system that you uh, have built how did it happen how long did it take yeah so uh, no very good point akshata so earlier the bill discount if one had to do a bill discounting then the supplier used to go to the bank mm-hmm. and he used to take a credit limit from a bank on his own credentials and not on buyer's credentials yeah okay so suppose uh, supplier are based in let's say 10 cities in india and they're all very fragmented they're not in a cluster mm-hmm. so now each one of them is approaching a bank uh, near their near their workplace mm-hmm. and and they're dependent on the, the respective manager of the bank to understand their to understand their customer and then take a credit limit mm-hmm. so it is all basis the goodwill of the supplier it, and his relationship with the bank and and that work is being done by let's say 10 suppliers in 10 different cities and there is a repetition of work mm-hmm. yeah. now what is bankers uh, problem sitting in 10 cities is that all the 10 banks don't know the buyer mm. yeah. you know and and they don't know uh, whether this is a genuine invoice whether the buyer who is approving the invoice whether it's a cfo whether it's a manager of finance whether it is a whether it is a, a, a average manager or a or a data entry operator who is approving the invoice yeah. in a in a normal scenario right and he, he they do not have an access and they can call or they can write an email and the response will come all that is a long drawn journey yeah. yeah now all of this has been curtailed and cut short and brought onto a platform wherein this exercise is being done by us for let's say all these 10 suppliers from 10 different cities they don't have to do anything Mm -hmm. they they all this work has been pre-done by us they -hmm. just have to come and put the invoice on the platform from the day we say go yeah now the the second important part from a banker's perspective Mm -hmm. is because they should have a comfort to bring liquidity is that how will the collection happen yeah 
right now they now which like i said in my when I, in the in the previous sequence i was saying that the bids have been placed they have accepted the bid yeah now whatever bids are accepted by the end of the day 9 pm yeah. the next day morning between 8 am to 11 am the credit happens to the supplier by the bank who has won the bid yeah okay That's now true. the invoices have different different due dates somebody has 60 days somebody has 90 days now now there are 10 suppliers one buyer 40 banks yeah so there is a, there is a complete algorithm that one bank is getting two invoices one bank is getting one invoice etc etc and the payment has to flow from one buyer to all these banks yeah and on different due dates Yeah. and that's where we come in as a platform on each due date we debit the buyer and give the credit to the respective bank on the due date so the bankers don't have to worry about collections mm-hmm. okay the suppliers don't have to worry about collection in a in a in a manual scenario it's the supplier who has to make the collection and then pay it back to the bank now in this digital scenario we are making the collections and giving it back to the bank okay so the whole process is completely you know, overall yeah that formed and the equations have changed yeah uh, right and uh, for a bank it's like a it's like a commercial paper yeah coming from 10 different suppliers of one buyer for yeah. 60 days 90 days they we give them a confirmation about the genuinity because the buyers uh allocated team member have logged in into the platform and approved the invoice uh-huh. okay. so it's not that uh, you know the the bank is not aware of who is approving the invoice yeah and in many large cases we are already integrated with buyer's erp system okay yeah okay so the approval of the invoice is coming from his erp accounting system so the banker doesn't have to even now worry about who is approving it so it's okay. all digital it's all electronic uh and the credit comes to the bank on the due date so that's how the whole cycle operates uh in the uh, platform nice. now when i said the uh, important part is many to many relationships now once the supplier comes in for one buyer okay he can repeat it for for x number of buyers y number of buyers without doing any paperwork again okay similarly a bank can get can do transactions with abc number of buyers abc number of sellers without uh, do, repeating the uh, transaction kyc agreements anything so it's a many to many relationship it's a it has made the it has made the whole transaction i mean unmeasurable without any limitation mm. yeah. and i think you're also building valuable data right uh, on like the credit worthiness of the supplier and the buyer absolutely yeah. deeply that's a very very important point now in 3 years uh, the data has been built mm. and that is enabling us and uh, very soon you will see we are going to the layer 2 of the suppliers mm. right now we're going layer 1 of the suppliers now layer 2 we are able to go because of this data only what, what do you mean by layer 2 of the suppliers like exact i mean uh, yeah. what do you mean by that like right. so our suppliers today which is layer 1 suppliers giving to a mid corporate or a large corporate yeah. they are they are termed as suppliers today and they are creating a lot of data for their successful transactions that means how successful has been have they been in delivering their purchase order value to the customer how much rejections have happened mm-hmm. uh, how many times have the customer sent back their goods uh, okay. for correction Mm-hmm. uh how much are they paid on time etc and their credit worthiness overall mm-hmm. now in this next scenario we are going to make these suppliers as the buyer mm-hmm. wow okay that means yeah. the tier 2 suppliers will now come in mm-hmm. who are supplying to these tier 1 uh, supply, tier tier one one supplier. suppliers today yeah. and the transaction will go to the next level because the data is flowing from last 3 years and we are able to uh, put credit worthiness to that got it so like this is like a new way of doing in some form right this was not how traditionally it was working so you must have had a lot of challenges uh, as you 
built uh, M1, and I'm sure, like as you started thinking about M1, you probably did, there was no fintech also at that point in time. So, how did you, um, you know, go about navigating your challenges and uh, as an entrepreneur? Yeah, so Akshita, uh, most of these challenges have been uh, sorted by the industry veterans only, uh, mm -hmm. who have been belonging to this industry more than me i am not belonging to the bank, uh, banking industry i am a i am a finance person but not a banking person mm -hmm. uh, so the first challenge i had to uh, face was collecting the banking teams in my in as a part of my structure uh, that was the first challenge and uh, once the banking team got the confidence and they became a part of m1 uh, then these challenges started to get solved so that's one point uh, the the second challenge now, once the teams are formed, is they have a preset mind that ye to aise hi chalta hai. this happens like this only. Yes. Uh, okay. you know, uh, in a manual environment, you know, we can only uh, our uh, the bankers will not agree, the managers will not agree, the committees will not agree, etc. etc. So yeah. change unlearning their unlearning their previous way of doing it is yeah is the biggest thing and uh, thinking innovatively thinking in a new way is something that uh, one has to work with them every day in a on a whiteboard to open their open their thoughts uh, out of a out of a herd of people always one or two come forward which are who are more receptive and then the whole process becomes start flowing in an innovative manner yeah. uh, this is a challenge this is the biggest challenge i face till today Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, so when I say if, uh, we are also setting up a similar platform for international trade finance, mm -hmm. uh, that means that will also be an exchange, mm -hmm. but for import and export. Mm -hmm. Now, when I am setting it up again after four years and a new set of teams have come in, yeah. it's again unlearning their previous way of doing international trade finance. Yeah. and adopting the new and adopting the digital way of doing it so unlearning and and innovation is something one has to handhold every day only then this can happen and this goes with the bankers also on the other side this goes with the corporates also on the other side yeah because the corporates uh, the culture of uh, the culture of adoption of digital and whether this will work or not work one has to show it to them only then they start opening up then only then they start adopting it and it doesn't frustrate you like when you have to unlearn and learn so many things like how um, i mean just uh, from an entrepreneur <laughs> point of view <laughs> yeah Akshata, you're right uh, it is many times uh, frustrating but uh, if you uh, you have to take a pause on yourself uh, every few hours every few days uh, think back and see what's happening uh, at a high level and then reflect on it again uh, <laughs> but every positive step you know washes away at least thousand negative steps in the past <laughs> so That's it's very very good. Uh, enormous fortitude and hats off to you for you've literally like uh, revolutionized an industry which is traditionally very slow moving and yeah. pretty resistant to change as well right yeah. so that's uh, that's amazing uh, so sandeep who are your competitors in this space yeah, so there are uh, two set of competitors. One is regulated by us, reg like regulated by an RBI, like us, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, an exchange owned by Axis Bank in India. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's another exchange which is owned by NSC, National Stock Exchange, and uh, SITB, which is a bank uh, joint mm -hmm. venture. So these are two regulated exchanges like us. Mm -hmm. And then there are unregulated platforms, which over the last two years have come up as fintechs who try and replicate uh, a similar model. Uh, and they don't have to be that, uh, they don't have to be so much worried about the compliance or the re regulations per se, which we have to follow. So these are the two uh, people that we compete with. What is the advantage of you know, a regulated platform for your end customer? over say uh, a startup yeah. that's more like a fintech large amount of liquidity mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we have been able to get 44 banks mm -hmm. like i said on the platform versus two banks three banks four banks on a on an unregulated platform yeah. so that's the core difference mm -hmm. uh, 
one of the important points which I missed out, and since you've asked me, I just remember now, and the difference between a regulated and unregulated is the cost of funding. Hmm. That's true. Right. So, uh, so on our platform, uh, because we are regulated and there is a bidding mechanism, hmm. yeah. uh, and it's a many to many relationship. So for every transaction, at least four to five banks are coming forward to uh, put a bid on the invoice rather than a bilateral thing. So there is a market making for every invoice mm -hmm. and that market making mechanism brings the best best pricing from the banks. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, in India, a small and medium enterprise gets uh, collateral based lending or the borrowing that they do get they get at about 11 to 12 percent per annum mm. and non-collateral uh, based uh, borrowing that they do uh, uh, that is minimum 15 percent and that goes up to as high as 24 percent per annum okay. now on our platform because we have very very large corporates on the platform today the average rate is for a small and medium enterprise giving goods and services to a very large conglomerate is anything between 4% per annum to 5% per annum. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so the gap is they are saving 10%. Yeah. Yeah. It's a right. lot. Yeah. Right. And that's the business model that this saving is then enjoyed by both the supplier and the buyer. Mm. Yeah. Right. And therefore, the business becomes very competitive. The cost of uh, funding has come down. So uh, the balance, the, the profits are higher for both the buyer and supplier. Now, this is the difference between a private platform and a uh, regulated platform, because in a private platform, the rate of interest is still ranging between 12 percent to 18 percent, which is a market rate of interest because it's a bilateral one on one discussion with the bank. Here we are doing uh, completely market is driving the rate of interest mm -hmm. and uh, that's the core difference between the two awesome. so, Sangeet, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, when you try to get an approval from the regulators uh, which is rbi uh, how did you go about it and you said you were one of the uh, uh, fintech companies that were out there um, so what was that process like and a lot of fintech companies that come out don't get generally regulated uh, because and they are fund taking funding externally at a much higher rate, as you pointed out. So how did you go about doing uh, something like that? Yeah. So Akshita, uh, this was a pitch to RBI in their initial days, uh, wherein we had to convince them about uh, our expertise, our value add that we will bring, and uh, go through a selection process, uh, which uh, they have defined in terms of the criteria. Uh, thereafter, uh, now the license is available on an open basis. They keep considering more applications. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, uh, since the three exchanges are not fully uh, scaled up to the extent that they are, the market is still open, the market has still potential to go. So uh, new licenses are coming slowly mm -hmm. uh, because the existing ones are still to uh, peak out uh, mm -hmm. on their on their volumes. Uh, so it's essentially submitting your credentials and basis your credentials, then the RBI considers you. So Sandeep, uh, tell us your journey. You mentioned that initially uh, the first year you did uh, 300 crores worth credit and then kind of took off. So what was your journey from zero to 300 crores? And then how did you scale after that? Right. Uh, so like I said, uh, Initially, even if we used to have an invoice in a day, I mean, there used to be a clapping all over an office and that one invoice has come for the day and it has gotten financed. Uh, so the uh, in the initial days, uh, I used to think that buyer and seller are important. And uh, uh, one investor like both of you uh, who was uh, evaluating the business model with me, uh, left a note with me and said, uh, Sandeep, uh, buyer seller will follow, mm, get the banks to your side. If mm. the liquidity is there, you will win the game. And uh, so I personally was spending 70% of my time on working with the banks. And uh, I and my role was to uh, essentially uh, 
take the help from all the senior banks, bankers in the industry. And either they are a consultant or a board member or a team member in M1. And we are cons we are collectively approaching all the banks and convincing them about it, about this change management. And I have other co-founder colleagues who joined as, as team members. They have scaled up to the to become co-founders today. They their role, they, they played a very important role in getting the corporates and the suppliers onboarded, giving them confidence. And India is a vast country. Today, uh, uh, suppliers are logging in from 900 cities on our platform. Uh, I mean, these cities are very, very small cities and, uh, and our teams are enabling them by phone or by digital means to how to utilize this service through a mobile phone or through a web application. So, so, so essentially there have been pockets who have been working on focused on, on the three, we have three customers, buyer, seller, and a banker. So there have been pockets focused on these three customers and cutting across has been the technology team. So the digital team and they have that is the fourth pocket and so each one has their own specialization each one has been nurturing their own bucket very very well and fortunately the 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 successful working togetherness of all these four pockets uh, leads to consummation of a transaction so 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 that's that's the magic which is working for the team you found the secret sauce <laughs> how big is your tech team uh we are 40 people now hmm. and uh, when we started initially we were six seven people and uh, so over a period of time now we've become 40 people awesome. so Sandeep, you spoke a little bit about setting up um, international trade finance and could you talk a little bit about that and what you're doing within those initiatives and uh, yeah sure uh, so uh, what we I mean, what we're doing is essentially from a, there is a place called gift city in India, which is a, uh, which is like a, uh, which is like a Dubai, uh, finance city, the IFC or like Singapore, which has mm -hmm. been set up very recently by government of India, which permits all financial transactions to be done as outside the borders of India. Mm -hmm. So we are setting, we've set up our platform there. We are going live, uh, probably in. We, our sandbox transaction has to happen in this quarter and our live transactions may follow after that wherein uh, the similar exchange under a regulator mm -hmm. is being set up where all the cross-border transactions whether happening from india mm -hmm. or from globally anywhere okay. can be financed by any bank mm -hmm. whether in india or whether outside india Okay. So, so we are we are setting that up. We have started onboarding the banks. The technology is uh, is in the now initial days of testing, and uh, if we should be we should be we are meeting up. We are running roadshow with most of the international banks now to onboard them. And if all goes well uh, in 2022, it's this should also become a, a decent reality. Mm -hmm. That's one side. Uh, what we are also doing is we have started uh, giving technology to the banks in other countries mm -hmm. or setting up similar exchanges in their respective countries wow. as as a SaaS platform. Mm -hmm. Now, the more and more uh, banks in the other countries are able to set it up. That's mm -hmm. when the network of the international platform will also uh, evolve further. Because if suppose uh, five or six countries have set up such exchanges in their respective geography, and when the international platform that we are setting up from Gift City is integrated with five such geographies, then the then then it will be very easy to scale it up. So that's another point that we are following. Got it. Okay. So uh, tell us about your vision for. Uh the company and what you're looking to do in the next three years so actually uh, vision wise it's essentially one simple thing that we want to cover all aspects of supply chain finance we are focused on that we specialize in that uh, whether it is international cross-border or whether it is domestic 
whether it is large corporate or a small corporate or a tiny corporate uh, so we want to cover every aspect of a supply chain buy side sell side of a corporate and that's what we are doing we've set up so far we've set up three entities m1 m2 and m3 hmm. Okay. M1 wow. is doing the buy side of the business and M2 is doing the sell side of supply chain finance oh, wow. and M3 is going to be the international finance uh, trade finance. So the objective is that we become a holistic supply chain finance solution and everywhere we are setting up a network. We are working with a concept of many to many, not very limited on a on a bilateral basis and uh, so that this network will will start evolving on its own uh, mm -hmm. that's the basic idea and if all goes well uh, the world should respect us and we should be one of the largest ones in the in in uh, globally and what is the fascination with m1 m2 m3 <laughs> is that <laughs> some kind of lucky number or lucky alphabet or <laughs> uh, well, uh, M1 was has been very lucky because it's number one. Yeah. And uh, uh, my uh, mentor used to always say that uh, number one or number 10 uh, is always the is representing being number one. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a journey going from one to 10. Hopefully, uh, someday we will reach 10 as well. <laughs> OK, <laughs> Sandeep, who would be your uh, uh, kind of competitor in the international trade finance world so international trade finance again has very uh, many many uh, private platforms uh, which are again run on a bilateral basis mm. okay so uh, many of them are there whether in europe whether in us uh, we do not uh, we have not come across any exchange kind of a uh, environment uh, so this will be first of its kind uh, and uh, we'll have to experience it, how market responds to it, how uh, how does it become valuable to them. Uh, over a period of time, we'll experience it. Mm. And uh, uh, so, like I said, there is no exchange kind of an environment existing globally. Mm. So do you have an app experience or is it like web based currently? Yeah. Like So, uh, yes, in in our domestic, we have we have app related mm. completely app driven. Uh, in the global, uh, I mean, once we stabilize, once we, in 2022 itself, it will be followed with an app. So really speaking, uh, app will be a part and parcel of the whole thing. And how do suppliers uh, discover your platform? Or is it like a household name now? Uh, yes. Uh, awareness is something uh, which is a big work we are doing on and uh, in India still, uh, though we are present in 900 cities, still it has not become uh, mm. awareness, uh, is still lagging. Uh, we are working with various state bodies, state mm. governments. Mm. Uh, we are working with various other institutions uh, to, to spread the awareness. Uh, it is growing like a rapid fire, fortunately. Mm. Uh, also, the network is itself now having a mm impact uh, one one good word from one supplier is reaching to another one that is one side uh, second is the large corporates are coming forward because it's a saving for them yeah uh, they are coming forward uh, the banks have started to come forward i mean we are loving it uh, they love us uh, because uh, it's a savings to them it has become a part of their business business models uh, so to that extent, the awareness has started happening. And now when we are launching the international trade, so just to give you a flavor, DP, we have 900 listed companies registered with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now these 900 companies occupy a very big part of the GDP in India. Mm -hmm. And when we are going for international trade, when we are talking to these 900 companies, that itself is uh, a big pivot for the international trade also. Yeah. Uh, because they are they are importing, they are exporting, and uh, so so really speaking, uh, international trade. Hopefully, we will not have a challenge of taking it to the market in a big way uh, in the initial period. Because these 900 companies itself will keep us busy. Uh, and once yes, uh, uh, we have pivoted all of them, then uh, we may have to start hunting in the international market more mm -hmm. and more. By then, the network would have would start playing an impact. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes sense. 
So let's jump to the the fun section, Sandy. <laughs> uh, who is your favorite entrepreneur? Uh, okay, uh, if you say ent entrepreneur, uh, I um, used to follow a lot Steve Jobs. Okay. Uh, having said that, last few years I've been watching Prime Minister Modi. Okay. And uh, he's the I would say he's the most successful social entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, you know the amount of scalability he brings in India with digital means. Uh, I learn a lot from him. Uh, how to scale up a digital model in the market of India amongst the SMEs. So for me, he's the role model. Awesome. Yeah, he's uh, actually he's not spoken enough about. Uh, of course, he's a politician, but I think his uh, execution skills are amazing. Like amazing. You know, he's been able to execute in the eight years in a country like India where there's no standardization at all. Uh, you know, he's, he's brought that change uh, in the mindset of the people. Right. If you go into right. into large gatherings and you listen to people, mm -hmm. they start talking his language. Yeah, he's a great leader. He's a very great leader, actually, I would say. All right. So uh, tell us something fun about yourself since we have spoken so much about work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am more of a uh, uh, you know person who likes to go out, swim, cycle, play games. Uh, so for me, the fun is uh, or whiling away time or unwinding myself is spending time on games and uh, with family. That's that's more fun for me. All right, sounds good. Uh, so let's start the rapid fire. So Sandy, just give us the first answer that comes to mind. Don't think too much. Uh, so the best decision you ever made? Being an entrepreneur. Very early in my life, I did it. Uh, one thing that you cannot live without? Water and maker's bar. <laughs> oh, we love that. <laughs> You're our favorite guest. <laughs> <laughs> one talent you wish you had? Uh, if I could do the coding myself. <laughs> Biggest life changer? Uh, when I started practicing spirituality. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So both Deepthi and I are big uh, spiritual seekers. Um, and wow. uh, yeah, so we, I think for me, it changed because of spirituality. I changed, went from an agnostic to a believer within one day. So always nice to see another spiritual seeker. So yeah. Well, my pleasure as well. And uh, I have learned a lot from my spiritual mentor. She's in India uh, called Meena Ji. And okay. it's an organization called Pranam. Mm -hmm. So I've learned all my spirituality and my teachings from her. Yeah, very nice. That's awesome. I think spiritual practice gives you that underlying foundation. However yeah. crazy your life gets, yeah. you can always return to that. And uh, it grounds you. <laughs> and there was something that I noticed when I spoke to you that you were very grounded. And I was wondering like where that came from. So yeah. <laughs> OK, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, Sandeep, what's your uh, proudest moment so far? Uh, after being spiritual, being truthful to myself, uh, if I look back, uh, I think uh, uh, the proudest moment have been the day I've become truthful to myself. Yeah. I think that's required for all of us <laughs> at times. <laughs> Any advice to budding entrepreneurs, uh, Sandeep? Uh, Advice to budding entrepreneurs uh, would be, uh, I would say, uh, being an entrepreneur, you have to kind of collate and collectively focus on all the buckets of an of, of your life of an enterprise to build it. Yeah. So you you may be, you may be best in one, but you have yeah. to learn everything, yeah. and uh, so and you can't leave anything to chance. Yeah. Uh, if you ignore something, it'll come to you. Will have to work in a few few days later or a few weeks later. It's just a timing difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's fun. It helps you to discover yourself a lot every day. So one must experience it, and it's a passion. And live your passion. I I am I I love this journey. I would say. Yeah. Sandeep, it was great talking to you and learning a lot more. I had a refresher course on trade finance today. So uh, this was really awesome. I have to like, uh, we really enjoyed it and learning a lot uh, about your company and your business as well. So it was great talking to you and thank you for coming to Makers Bar. 
Thank, thank you, so you much. Akshita. Thank you, Deepthi. My pleasure as well. I also enjoyed it. Sunday morning for me. All of you have a good. Uh, By the way, it's Sandeep's birthday today. So oh, happy birthday, Sandeep! Happy birthday! <laughs> Thanks thank for you. spending your special day, starting off with us. <laughs> thank you so hope much. The rest uh, of your day and your year go very, very well. And uh, this was an absolute pleasure. This was like yeah. uh, one of the most uh, uh, educative uh, sessions we've had. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much for taking the time. <laughs> My pleasure as well. Nice yeah. of you to host me. Yeah, I'll just end the broadcast now. <laughs>